person who shows up with a simple actionable plan, sticks to that plan, and then is consistent with that plan, that person is going to win over time. I just take the next step and the next step and the next step until I get to, yeah. my, to, my, to my goal. Welcome back, real estate agents, to the RMG Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Reed Moore, and I'm here to help impact, empower, and encourage you in your real estate career, and really excited that you're back with us. If you haven't gotten a chance to go back and listen to our last episode, stop collaborate and listen. We talk about listening skills and how important they are to your leadership and to your sales development. Also, if you haven't gone to our website, rmgagentpodcast.com, we have all kinds of great things there, including uh, the webinar that we just did, which is uh, all about how to navigate surviving and thriving in the upcoming coming changes inside of the real estate industry. And as usual, I have my awesome co-host with me here to help bring the goods, Jake Bartlett. Hey. Good to see you again, my yeah, friend. You too. I'm excited to be here. And we uh, we filmed that last episode, Stop, Collaborate, and Listen. And it's a great one for anybody because uh, you are a leader to your clients as right. well. And, and and learning to be able to listen from them or agents that are working, working for you is just a, it's a great uh, episode. So I encourage you to go back and listen to that. We are going to be talking about uh, our episode this time was dealer's choice, right? Yes. We did we did questions and things from uh, from different sources, as well as we compiled some things from people that we lead, whether that's new agents up to you know you lead you lead teams across the country. So uh, uh, so we took habits and behaviors and external factors and internal factors, right? Yeah, so. so we're getting feedback from everybody and also just asking the question, like what do we constantly hear when we're coaching people, whether they're a new agent or seasoned agent or, or somebody who's leading in, in the real estate space? And when we were dialoguing about it, it seems like there's uh, some commonality. Mm -hmm. And the commonality is that a lot of times we get questions that have to do with external factors about the market or uh, um, different tools or different different, uh, different ways to, to go about things. But when we dig deeper, right? So when you're coaching somebody, you start trying to, to get below the surface and figure out what, what is the real question? What's the question behind the question? What we both have found is, uh, is there are a lot of internal factors that are the foundation of success and accomplishment. And if those internal factors aren't uh, being taken care of appropriately, the external ones are just not the right question at the right time. Right. Yeah. So the, uh, the, what's the, the star Wars saying, like the truth is inside of you, right? Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> that's probably not it. If you're a star Wars fan, I'm sorry. Uh, but it, what I've found is that, uh, we allow our brains to trick ourselves that the external factors are the reasons why we're not successful. And it's usually the internal internal habits and behaviors that you've created. Yeah, so before we, you know, we talk about the the next cutting edge thing that's external to somebody that will help you get the competitive advantage and and there are people that need that, right? Like you in your career uh, really have your foundations in an excellent place and now you're looking for that 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 next bleeding edge thing. But we want to in this episode address the things that we see uh, at, at all levels of accomplishment in our industry that continue to become either a, a problem or something that is a massive competitive advantage, right? And we think there's four, yep. right? So uh, let's jump into those. The first one that we see is, a, is a, um, a problem that people from every aspect do is they overcomplicate things. Yes. Yeah, so so when we, um, when we look at the biggest, way, like the, the first way that we get in our own way is we take simple things and make them complicated. And so one of the things I learned a long time ago, Jake, was that teachers take very, very simple things and they make them complex, right? They, they kind of expound things out and, and that's the, the role of a teacher. And leaders take complex things and make them simple. And one of the things that we've talked about on the podcast before is the only thing that's actionable is something that's really, really simple. When we look, you know, a week or two ago, we watched the Super Bowl. And with the exception of maybe one play, everything else was very, very simple. It was absolutely fundamental football. And I've seen football games where one team decides Decides to get you know really overcomplicated with their play, uh, with their play calling. What happens? Yeah, they mess it up. They mess it up. Yeah, right. 
the other team you know takes advantage of that because they did the what's the acronym the kiss model keep it simple stupid yes. right yeah don't overcomplicate things so um i see this a lot with uh with lead generation with newer agents like they want to um, maybe chase shiny objects or, or get to that easy button and they overcomplicate like the actual practice of just sitting down for two hours and calling people, right? Like mm -hmm. they want to create the new shiny TikTok video, which is, you know, if that's going to be part of your model and you're going to work really hard at it and you're going to do that at the high level, you're going to find it's going to be hard as well. Uh, but don't don't uh don't overcomplicate the easy things yeah and, and even even just you think about the word that you use you know do something at a high level mm -hmm. a high level um assumes a lot of foundation mm -hmm. if i'm on the h highest level of a mountain i'm not on the largest part of the mountain i'm up on kind of the the, the pinnacle mm -hmm. and that pinnacle is base is built on layers and layers and layers of things that have that have come before that are solid that are profound that are stable and so when when we watch ourselves honestly look in the mirror right or other agents overcomplicate things the, the the biggest issue with that is is that as soon as you overcomplicate something it's not actionable and uh, and it leads you to really the second challenge that we see one other thing on the overcomplicated you talked about the the mountain uh that that makes me think of hunting because i'm a hunter and there's always this moment, especially when you've got you know an animal on your back and you're hiking up out of a hill or hiking down out of a big canyon of you get down to like the nitty gritty of the the weights a lot, the hills have you know the hills tight uh, tall, and you end up with this brain. At least I do. It's just I just take the next step. Yes. I just take the next step. Yeah. I just take the next step, and I don't complicate things more of like, well, what if I skip this next? You know, if I jump this next step, or if I if I try to run for 10 feet, right? Like I just take the next step and the next step and the next step until I get to yeah. my to my to my goal. I love it. And it's you know it's interesting because when we're doing things like that that are hard, it gives us really clear feedback that forces simplicity. But when you wake up and you go to the office and you're inside of your business, um, there's not necessarily an instant feedback loop that tells you you have got to simplify or you're not going to survive you're, you've got to simplify or you're not going to make it that simplify or you know or or, or die uh it, it really is this slow progression until you wake up one day and and it's actually too late just to do something simple even though that's still the answer all right now we're on to the second one we see uh we're calling it re re Re, 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 rethinking. Re, yes, re, re, rethinking. Yes. So most of the people in our industry are, um, you know, uh, self-proclaimed entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain level of kind of, uh, craziness that comes with being any kind of an entrepreneur because you are taking a lot of risk for the potential of a disproportionate reward. That's what's wonderful about real estate. It's about what's wonderful about entrepreneurialism. The, the issue is, is that the same tendencies for us to see an idea and then go after it are the same tendencies that keep us from the discipline of seeing an idea, making a plan, and then continuing to pursue that plan all the way to the point that you actually have an outcome. And so the second thing that I see again from a brand new agent all the way up to people running really big businesses is that they they get to a simply a simple plan. They put it on paper like that will work. And the next day they wake up and they think of like five new cool ideas that they could try instead. And then what happens is as a as a, a newer agent, you you never build you never build anything that allows you to get any kind of feedback. Right. So so that and that encourages re re rethinking, because if you do something uh, for such a short period of time that you don't get feedback, then it doesn't feel like it's working. So then you try the new thing, you try the new thing, you try the new thing. And it's the same it's the same concept as compounding interest. If you don't like continue to work that plan to be able to see what the outcome is, you never get any compounding in your activities. Right. Yep. So a couple things to this, and I, the reasons why uh, I think this are is is because we we talked about the freedom, flexibility, and, and financial reward, right? Like people get into real estate because of one of those three things. Right. Uh, if you're one of those freedom and flexibility people, you're going to lean towards this a lot. I believe, yes. right? Yes. Like because you're constantly free to make the choices that you want to, even if they're detrimental to your success, mm -hmm. because you love that. It's, and flexibility, like you wake up one day and you're like, I'm going to 
be super successful at open houses and you do one that weekend and then Monday comes around and you're like, I'm going to start a farm, right? And then yes. then the following Monday, you're like, I'm going to do internet leads. And then the next week you're going to do mailers and the next week you're going to do like, you just are constantly flexible to do that, right. but, you, but, but you don't get the rewards out of doing something consistently for a long period of time. Yeah. So my second point to that is you don't earn the right to change models until you've mastered models. I can't tell you how many people, if we sat down and gave, gave a new agent the plan for our model from, you know, brand new agent to 35, 36, 37 on to however many, you know, we have big goals for the next few years. Like, I bet most agents would be a weekend before they tried to change up. And then most of them probably change it a, a day in. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I can give you a plan that's going to build a big business, but you're going to change it immediately. Right. And that's, that's one of the hard things. Uh, you know, I did um, this last weekend, my wife and I did a two hour kettlebell class. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, you know, it was kind of a more, the, the group we were with was kind of intermediate. And I remember I'm there and, and I always have a tendency to, uh, it's not my best trait, but I have a tendency to, uh, you know, if, if they're, if they say something like the amount of weight doesn't matter, we're just working on form. What do I do? Really big weight. I go, <laughs> I go grab. Like I, I know, that, I know that I can do this way. I've done this yeah. weight before, and so I'm doing it. And my form's crap, and uh, the instructor's like, he's like, give me that. Like take this little one. It doesn't matter. And and I'm there, and I'm like, okay, I'm teachable. He's right. I just know this about myself. I have this default. Mm. It's the same default that causes me when I'm not at my best to do this kind of behavior, mm -hmm. right? Which is, um, you know, I, I fundamentally like there's this level of pride or ego sometimes that's behind this. Like I know better. And if you zoom way out and you think, wait a second, you're a new agent or you're a new team leader or you've built a pretty good sized team, but you're not, you're not running a monster industry. The reality is, is you thinking that you know better than the people that are trying to help you is, is really arrogant. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is if you do know better, then build better off of the current best practices, mm -hmm. right? Build off of what you've learned. So if you have a new agent that comes to you after six months or a year, and they are cranking and they are nailing it and they're building out their, their skill sets and they say, hey, I want to now try doing this on top of all these things. Yeah, right. let's, let's do it. Because, you, because you've been able to do it to the point that you're able to get feedback, and now let's see if you can get feedback on this next thing. Because if, if you build out all of those things, you know, leads us to our next point, consistency. Mm -hmm. If you build out consistently, then then we get feedback that allows us to know in a short period of time whether or not this new thing is working. Yeah, so the, the struggle that we see people in this is the inconsistency aspect of yes. things, right? So, um, and I see this a lot with agents that they'll do a, a couple different things. They'll either change every single month, mm -hmm. right? Like they'll readjust their plan that they just put out or they will, the other cardinal sin of this is they will throw a whole bunch of things at the wall, no way of tracking what metrics are, and then they pick the one that they like is the one that gave them the success, and then when they stop doing the other ones, they don't know why the success came, right? Like yes. they're, they're inconsistent in their tracking model mm -hmm. of how they're, how they're getting success. Yeah, so consistency is, is king, right? So if you have, uh, if, you, if you work out your, um, your inconsistencies in any area of your life, just think about it. If, if, your, if your spiritual disciplines were consistent, how would your spiritual life be? If your physical health disciplines are consistent, how is your physical health? If your lead generation is consistent. So we can take, we can take intelligence, we can take drive, we can take all of these factors and just set them to the side and say, the person who shows up with a simple actionable plan sticks to that plan and then is consistent with that plan, that person is going to win over time right? They may not feel like it for a very, very long time, which is one of the other issues. Like the, we, we, we always do things that serve us. Mm -hmm. So the reason that myself or you or any other agent shows up with these, uh, these behaviors and these habits that are, uh, contrary to us achieving our goals is they are doing something for us, right? They're, they're providing a hit to our ego or they're, they're just doing something. So you got to kind of sort that out. Yeah. Uh, it, it's usually the the path of least resistance is pleasing to the, your ego, right? But that's sure. not necessarily the thing that's the best, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so the last one here is that uh, I see people overvalue items that they take pride in, 
Yes. In what the success or results that they get. Yes. So one of the one of the things that um, is just the hardest to get somebody. A lot of times this shows up as breakthrough when somebody is making it or doing fairly well and they want to go to the next level. Is there's a tremendous amount of pride and even um, uh, like self worth that's attached to the things that that you think are valuable in your business. Mm -hmm. But the harsh reality is there are a lot of things that you continue to sell yourself on as really important in your business, and they just aren't. There are things that you tell yourself about your consumer experience that you are selling yourself are so important to the consumer. And if we were able to go and actually, uh, you know, have, have a conversation with those consumers and ask them about the most impactful things that they experience there's some of those things that are just they're so irrelevant but the problem is the amount of time and energy and focus that goes into irrelevant things takes time and focus and energy away from the relevant things and the relevant things like lead generation like follow-up like nurturing your network like being consistent with all of that those are not instantly emotionally pleasing and that's a big problem in a lot of people's businesses yeah, I see it with the saying that uh, that you hear from agents a lot, especially when they're at that moment where they really should grow, which is they get they get stuck in the mindset of like my clients will only work with me totally. because of me, right? No, yeah. they 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 work with you because of the level of experience that you're giving them, and you can teach somebody else to give them that same level of experience. Yeah, yeah, and there's just you know we think about even just the the paperwork and all the different things. I I have heard agents and leaders over the years uh, come up with basically the same excuse for anything and everything that they're unwilling to leverage or anything or uh, everything that they're unwilling willing to to change in, in order to hit their goals. So the issue is, of course, it's like, if you don't want to change, that's totally fine. Like, it's your life. But if you keep having stress and pressure and frustration around not getting somewhere, and then you keep doing the same things, and then when somebody challenges those things, you fight for them. Like the old saying is, you get to keep what you're willing to fight for. So you have somebody and let's say they're running you know, a, a medium-sized team and they want to grow to a larger team, maybe multiple locations, and, and, and they're, not, they're not fighting for that because fighting for that means dying to some of these things that they're currently doing. Right. And that, it's really, really hard. It's maybe it's the reason that uh, all of us are where we are is all of the things that we're unwilling to challenge in our own thought processes, in our own emotional life, right? And so when we see these four things constantly at work, like whenever we're having a conversation, a coaching conversation, there's a question, uh, those questions a lot of times boil back down into one of these four. Mm -hmm. Yep. So let's, let's recap those four and then we'll go to the opposite, yeah. the counterpoint of those. So the first one is, uh, we see people overcomplicate things. Uh, they rethink, I won't say re seven times this time they rethink things. Uh, they're inconsistent and they overvalue certain aspects of things that they do. Yes. Yeah. So the counterpoint to overcomplicate is simple. Yes. Let's boil things down to a simple aspect. Yeah. So if you're a very intelligent person, which I'm not one of those, those people, but if you're a really intelligent person, one of your biggest challenges can be that your accomplishment might be so simple that it feels like it's beneath you, mm. right? If you wake up early and you go to the office and you make a certain number of phone calls, that means you make $200,000 a year. And it, there's actually really not much more to it than that. There's going to be a big internal, like compelling to make it more than that. But the reality is, is if you stop and think and you spend a good amount of time, like go to our business planning webinar, build out a simple plan and then just flat out follow that plan, look at it every day and just do what you said you're going to do. That simplicity will, will build unbelievable momentum, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're just going to do the basic things over and over and over yeah. and over again. Uh, one of the things that, when I, uh, I just had a conversation with somebody and was talking to him about how you grow a team, right? And if you're boiling growing a team down to the simplest aspect is you're just replicating the lead generation model with more agents, yeah, right? that's right. And so that would be an example of keeping something simple. Mm -hmm. uh, the rethinking is trusting the plan. Yes, so so once, once you have uh, built a plan or if you're a part of a company who has built a plan and you trust those leaders, right, to whatever extent, then now it's simply about trusting the plan. And, and, I, and I'll, I'll say it this way, a mediocre or even poor plan 
that is followed and executed well will outperform the most brilliant plan that nobody actually is consistent with. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the focus on how perfect the plan is, is pretty irrelevant. Having all of the thought process that goes into planning, writing it down, and then just flat out, like follow the bouncing ball. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not Usher, just, just do karaoke. Like don't, don't come up with your own rendition. Just, if you're doing karaoke, just follow, just follow the bouncing ball. Just yep. do that, yep. right? Yep, you created that plan for a reason. Now follow it. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, inconsistency becomes be consistent. Be consistent, right? For me, this is my arch nemesis in every area of life. When I take on the challenge to become consistent, that area of my life thrives. If I'm consistent in my marriage, consistent in my parenting, consistent in my physical health, all of those things, like this is it for me. Uh, out of all of these things, I've done the other ones pretty well. Me being consistent or inconsistent, even the way that I show up in a conversation. If I can show up to a coaching conversation or a hard conversation uh, consistently mm -hmm. to where like with my kids, they know that dad doesn't fly off the handle one day and is uh, disengaged the next day, but I show up the same way. That is unbelievably powerful. So for me, I put a ton of time and energy into consistency because I know how much better I am when I'm consistent. Yep. This is one of the things, and we just recently implemented something in our office that's a, a new accountability measure. And when I'm talking with, with people about it, it's like, we have to hold people accountable. What's the most simple way that we can do that and such a way that we can do it forever? Yeah. Right? That, that's that's it. consistent. Like, it's not something we're going to do for three weeks and then hope that it's it, the plan stays the same. Like, I intend to do this plan consistently forever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you think of all the things uh, that we take for granted that we trust, right? We trust them because they're consistent. You know, we trust, we trust a Starbucks maybe with our coffee because every single time it's the same. Yeah. I trust that, you know, if I fly Alaska airlines, I trust that the consistency of being able to go from point A to point B without dying is, is, you know, uh, a rounding error to a hundred percent. Unless you're on the plane that the door goes flying uh, yeah, off, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but and it, nobody died. And so. yeah, nobody died. Yeah. Well, and just, you know, so just like all of those different things I trust uh, in my truck when I push the button, the engine comes on, mm -hmm. right? And anything that's la that's less than almost 100% consistent starts to create all of these problems in my life. Mm -hmm. Well, how do I show up for all the other people? I think the other aspect of this is we're talking on uh, maybe a slight sidetrack of, of a, uh, something that happens through consistency is doing something without thinking. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and the level of, of freedom that you get by having to not think to do something is amazing. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and then the overvalue things becomes the 80, 20 principle. Yeah, if you can get, it's an old principle, it's an old uh, idea, but if you can look at all the things that you do in your business and you can ask yourself the question, what is the 20% that matters most? Okay, and now we take that question, and we make it more narrow. What is the 20% that causes money to go into my bank account, mm -hmm. right? That 20% that matters most, and then you have all these limiting beliefs. Well, I don't wanna just, okay, time out. We're not talking about you made a commission. We're talking about over the course of a 20 or 30 year career, what were the things that caused money to constantly come in? you're not gonna all of a sudden not take care of relationships because that is absolutely inside your 20% that matters. But there's a lot of things that you're gonna to have to challenge that don't lead to money now or money later. And the reason that we make money doing what we do is we offer a service to somebody. And so the 20% that matters most is what about my service causes people to want to come back and use it again. There's a lot of things that masquerade and parade like important, but if you could track the actual results that come back from those things, they end up being, they, they show up as irrelevant. And the hard thing about this is the amount of money in any business will betray you, right? If, if, if you look at how much money you make versus how much money somebody else in, in the same industry makes over time, right? What you'll find is one person because they have the same number of hours that you do or approximately the same, one person is choosing to not do a bunch of things that you are telling yourself are important, right? Yeah. And then we have this ability to start telling ourselves all these limiting beliefs about why they got where they are and kind of demonize it. But, okay, so everybody is a person, everybody's a mixed bag of good and bad and all this other stuff, but fundamentally, they're beating you 
at the prioritization of what matters most. Yeah, the other, the other word we've used some in this is specialized, right? Like yeah. they specialize in these few things that are, and they become exceptional at those. Right. Right. Yep. All right. So a uh, couple things. So this was an awesome episode. First off, I've, I I caught myself listening in a couple things like, yeah, I'm I'm struggling in that area here right oh, yeah. now. So yeah. I gotta I gotta go back and make some adjustments. Uh, we did an ep- uh, a webinar. Yes. Uh, and that's up on the website, right? It is. Yep. So you can see the webinar, uh, which was entitled. Uh, uh, Come with me if you want to live. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and that was kind of a, a, a take on what's happening within the real estate industry and launching some of the stuff that we've talked about on the on the podcast, but more yeah. in depth with visuals and things like that. Yeah. And if you haven't had a chance to be on the webinar, um, it's just uh, it, it, we get beyond the normal talking points and we talk about some of the things that that are absolutely going to happen, not just the what ifs and then what you can do to control what you can control. Yep. Perfect. Uh and this concludes the end of season one. This is the end of season one. Yeah. So we are, uh, I think we did 23 episodes yep. in season one. And so we're really excited to be able to come back and do season two. We're going to give it a couple of weeks. We have some kind of new, exciting things that we're going to throw in the mix. Uh, as always, our goal is just to provide massive value to you as a real estate professional to impact, empower, and encourage you to really to take your, your business to the next level, right? If this is what you do as a profession, then when you wake up tomorrow, you know, what can you do to get better? What can you do to be really proud of who you're becoming uh, in the gift that is real estate as an industry? So as always, uh, this uh, hopefully has an impact, empowers, encourages you. And yeah, thanks for tuning in to season one and check out season two when it drops. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple weeks in season two.